Hello guys, welcome to the new episode of Tech Career 2.0. So the guest tonight is very special because he has moved from a public telecom sector to a private IT sector, which is still considered to be a taboo in India. Uh, so we have the privilege to have Vineet on our show. Uh, welcome to our show, Vineet. Yeah, hi. Hi, Ankit. Hi, Mohit. Hi, First of all, thank you for having me. Yeah, so I have around 12 years of experience in the ID and telecom field. Uh, I Like Ankit said, that I moved from a public telecom sector to a private core ID company. I have been working in the in the IT sector now for around two years. And before that, uh, I was in India in a public telecom sector. And yeah, that's it. So just share your experience, you know, yes. you know, people think working in a public sector and, you know, working in a private sector seem to be pretty secluded. You know, if you are in a public sector employee, uh, you have some strong opinions about private sector. And if you're a private sector employee, you have some strong opinions about public sector. Just share your views about how, after the transformation, what you felt on the other side of the bridge, how it is. Yeah, so that is definitely true. So there are some prejudices about this thing. Uh, so people who are in the public sector, they think that uh, everyone in the private sector is like working 24 seven and all of them are like 100% efficient all the mm -hmm. time. And the people in the private sector think that uh, the people who are working in the public sector, they don't work at all <laughs> and are inefficient. So the truth is that both are wrong because uh, there are very, very good, intelligent, smart people working in the public sector and uh, very, very highly efficient. And uh, at the same time, in the, in the private sector, you will find there are people who are not so efficient and still thriving. So, uh, and public sector people are also under a lot of pressure these days. And uh, in the private sector also, it is not always like they are working 24 uh, seven. They also get to relax. So yeah. things are pretty much similar on both sides. Yeah. So, yeah. So Vinit, uh, what was initial trigger or I would say like, what was your motivation that you thought of transforming from a public to private sector? Was there anything or, or is, was it a, just a organic progression kind of thing? Yeah, so for me, uh, it was more like uh, I wanted to gain more knowledge. So mm. the skill upgradation was always something which was a high priority for me. Mm. So things were fine for, for like six to seven years. Things were fine. We were getting to work on the latest tech and everything. Uh, but when 5G started coming into picture and also when, you know, when 4G was maturing. Mm. So during that period, I found that uh, we, our company was not investing on the new tech. Yeah. for whatever reasons and uh, i thought that my skill upgradation was also taking a back seat because of that so i wanted to upgrade myself i don't want to get obsolete i want to learn and the other thing which was important for me was that i always wanted to go for some kind of <clears throat> higher education so i actually combined both of these things and uh, used that opportunity to okay if i go for a master's uh, I will be able to upgrade myself as well as I will be able to transform my career at that point. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how it all changed. So uh, so initially when you decided to move from public to private, what was the initial reaction from your family member? Because that's a, still a taboo, big <laughs> taboo uh, in our society, right? So uh, how what was the reaction and how did you do the uh, manage? Convincing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it is, it is true that it is a taboo and it is also true that the decision was not like, you know, very straightforward. Mm -hmm. Normally people, when they are able to do something uh, successfully after that, they will say, oh, it was so easy. <laughs> decision yeah. was so uh, natural for me, but it is not true. Every decision is difficult in life. Yeah. So yeah, it was difficult. Uh, convincing wasn't that difficult for me because my parents were like, whatever you want to do. And they were always like that. Uh, so if you if you if you are confident about something, then mm. we are with you. It's okay. Yeah. So there you had full support from your family, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And what about your extended like the other part of society, which are uh, relatives and the neighbors? And did you had to deal with that as well, or your family protected you from there? Or... 
Uh, but you don't need to pay attention to those people yeah. for anything. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good so, learning. So yeah. it doesn't matter. It will, it will, it's not just about this thing. Anything mm. you do in life, what others will say, uh, I mean, apart from your close and dear ones, uh, it, it shouldn't matter. So what, what was the thing which was first in your mind? Like, where would I move? Like, uh, uh, was there any particular technology you were, you were targeting or was it the industry? Was it, yep. uh, so what was your next step that you thought like, okay, I'll, I'll move from here because I'm not, uh, upgrading myself. So what was the next step which your thought come so, to? So, uh, the thing is that even in my past company, in the, in, when I was working in the public sector, so mm-hmm. I was closely doing some IT related work at mm-hmm. that time also. And I was having some of my own personal projects as well, which mm-hmm. were related to software. So I had an inclination towards it, uh, from that time. Uh, so I thought that I need to upgrade myself and then, uh, maybe start working in the IT sector. Uh, you know, and uh, so, yeah, so I went for higher education first because of that. So uh, from the perspective of, you know, working and then going to higher education, I think this still is a very challenging part. Yeah. Right? You have yeah. to think about a lot of, uh, you have to consider a lot of factors into your mind. How difficult yeah. was it and uh, what were your thought process, you know, moving, uh, you know, from earning position to into kind of yeah. a earning position in your education? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is difficult. It is difficult. So it depends upon how much motivated you are to do something. So if there is, so because uh, there was a drive in me to do, you know, to do the skill upgradation or transformation. So because of that, I was uh, able to take that call. So yeah, it was difficult uh, because you have to invest a lot of money. You have to go from an earning position to being unemployed. Mm-hmm. For, and that also, you know, when you take this uh, uh, these kinds of calls at an early age, you are also earning less. So, yeah. are, but when you are doing it at a later stage, you are earning more. So, going uh, jobless at that time is more difficult. Yeah, because, because you lose more money. Yeah. You the more you earn, the more you spend as well, right? So, your spending is also you are in a habit exactly. of spending and more. And also, your life situation. If we talk about, you may get married, you may have kids. Yeah. So that also is an additional you know, an additional pressure. Mm. So yeah, it was, it was difficult. It's just that uh, the motivation and the drive was higher and I was able to do that. Uh, you know, you finished your master's, you know, uh, I would say you would have some, uh, you know, uh, knowledge through the course and then you would have some, you have done, you would probably have done some projects as well. Yeah. So well, when you are now at, at your workplace, uh, what is the, the gap? Is it, first of all, is there any gap from what you you know uh, learned in the university, or we can say yeah. what you were taught, and then what yeah. is being used in the organization, and if, if if there is a gap, how did you mitigate it, and how did you overcome that? Yeah, yeah. yeah so <clears throat> definitely there is a gap, and it is it is not like uh, from where, from what place you study, always there will be a gap at your workplace and your what you have studied at at your college or universities because in college and universities uh, the focus is to prepare you for everything which may come forward and okay. so that you can decide where you want to go they are not telling you that you will be working on one thing uh, in one company in one role they are not preparing you for that that's why it is it is problematic for them also yes that's why uh, the difference is there between what you learn in colleges and what you actually do. So there is a gap, that's true. To f- how to fill that gap? Now that is a very important question. So to fill that gap, first thing is that uh, the projects that you, as you mentioned, so if you are doing some projects, so how much relevant are those projects to the real work that is being done in the industry? The real, if you, are, if you pick up some projects, those must be relevant to the actual use cases. Hmm. And you must not like pick up a project and copy it, what others have done. Try to develop your own solution. Hmm. Or maybe even even better, if you pick up a uh, pick up a problem on your on your own. Hmm. If you identify a problem, you pick that up, you work on that. So practical problems and try to find practical solution. Implement those solutions in the form of projects that can fill that gap. 
So one example I can give is that uh, since I came from a telecom company, so I faced a problem like during uh, planning of your BSS sites, uh, can we use data analytics to do that? Depending upon the loading that we can expect in a particular area. Because from, from data, you can get a lot of insights which you don't, uh, you know, you can, uh, you can guess or you can predict or you can find a pattern in things. So I tried that. So I extracted data based on uh, where more uh, public places are, where you expect more people to be and to interpolate that data with uh, site planning. Hmm. So I, I created a project out of it. Yeah, so exactly. that was one example. Yeah, and that is quite relevant, you know, because I come from the same telecom background and, uh, you know, companies and most of the shift in the toward industry is to become data driven. Yeah. And you will see this application in every, every, I would say, yeah. every industry now. Yeah. Earlier, you used to solve problems after they occurred. After but they now happen. you can predict the problems predict before the they problem. occur. Yeah, and solve them, and even you know, you just prevent them from occurring because of because you have the data. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's a valuable insights, you know, for our viewers also because uh, if they are there in any, uh, I would say, role or any situation, they can think about how they can utilize this data to predict such kind of uh, upcoming scenarios, right? Yeah, I yeah. think that's the way. That's way it's really important, right? irrespective of whatever you are working yeah. on, whichever technology you are working on, data analyst, cyber security will play an intrinsic role in overall industry. So it's better yourself to, to upgrade yourself, although you like you might not be working on it today, but it will be a requirement for you tomorrow. So better upskill yourself on these two. So yeah, it's coming absolutely. to that experience, you know, uh, when you were uh, working with the public sector uh, telecom, uh, uh, was there any ins uh, instance that you would like to share, uh, you know, any story with our listeners that probably comes to your mind, which stands out in your, I uh, would say, in that uh, experience of yours? I will reflect upon a one incident, or it is like a continuous thing for, for being in a public sector company. Sometimes you do things which, I mean, many times you do things which are not profitable, but yeah. are required. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So when you are working there, you may be asked, to go to you know some activities which are in the village, or you may be asked to do things uh, for election commission. So yeah. you may be asked to deploy, uh, you know, uh, network at places where no private sector will go, where there may be only you know ten houses, and you have yeah. to you have to provide services over there. So yeah. you may be asked to deploy, uh, you know, uh, network at places where no private sector will go, where there may be only, you know, 10 houses and you have mm -hmm. to, you have to provide services over there. So that is, that is interesting actually. And because you are doing something good, which right. is not just for profit making, but for the benefit of the, of the people yeah. and the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I had a similar experience as well, like where I worked on a uh, private public partnership organization, where we were rolling out the infrastructure for, for the, for the for the whole country and some of the things were we knew that it's not profitable but you have to do it because no other private organization would do it right do so it. there's no profit one is like the benefit to the um to the community right so yeah you have to yeah. first look into that so yeah. Yeah. and that's yeah. a, that's a one positive side of working in a public, public sector organization is that yeah. it will benefit those sec those uh section of the society they yeah, probably will be overlooked by the private sector because yeah. obviously in private sector profitability is yeah. a key driver, right? Yeah, this takes us back to you know that perception or prejudice thing that um, many people who have not worked in those uh, in yeah. the public sector they think that uh, why they 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 are in loss because they don't work. They don't. <laughs> but they are in loss because of certain other things also. Certain, correct, correct. Yeah, not everything. Can be measured by yeah, profit, the profitability, right. right? So you cannot, you cannot calculate the happiness index or yes, or the health health of a community by, exactly. by earning profit out of it, right? Yeah. So if you are connecting, a, let's say, a village, 
and providing an internet connectivity, like in telecom sector, right? If you are connecting yeah. a remote village, providing an internet, right? To just a village for that, you have to lay a fiber probably for 100 yeah. miles. Obviously, you will not be profitable, right? You are spending a million dollars to connect a hospital, but what's the value at? It will save a lot of lives. It will save hundreds and thousands of lives. And that can't be, uh, you can't measure it with the with the money, right? Bottom line, right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so just another question. You know, you said that after your, uh, you know, university degree, you had to, you know, appear for probably some of the interviews. So, just a question. Yeah. How many interviews did you appear for? And is there any instance or insight uh, or maybe some incident that you probably would like to recall of in that journey? Okay, so number of interviews, uh, I do not remember the exact count, but maybe around eight to 10. I don't remember exactly, yep. but yeah, about that. And any incident? Uh, yeah, so there can be multiple things I can tell you. So one thing is that sometimes uh, in the initial rounds, uh, when they are interviewing you, uh, they are not actually looking at your technical knowledge. And uh, what they are trying to judge is that uh, how well you can adjust to the new position or the new team. Now, in some companies, it happens at the last stage. Yeah. But, but uh, I was surprised that it was also happening at the first stage mm. in at some places. So at some directly they are coming to your personality rather than mm. uh, first taking care of your, you know, the knowledge, yes, the background and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Because so the that, reality is that what you are working now, right now, might not be the something which you will be working after six months six or months. a year, right? So yeah. judging for you for a particular skill only. Mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense because that skill might not be needed after six months exactly so are, exactly That's so true. right now they might be in a stage they are almost there in at the phase of the deployment or just before deployment they just mm -hmm. need you for, to work on the skill after that you they want you to work on something else so judging yeah. just based on a skill is is yeah. no longer a, because we are not yeah. in a phase of the industry where a person if let's say he's a java engineer is just working on a java yeah. development for entire yeah. career and he's not working he's not looking into anything else like so yeah yeah, yeah and it is that's... also true that some of for, for some of your viewers uh, this thing might be very common and i'm telling it as a special guest because i worked in a in a public sector same company for 10 years and i never had to appear in interviews yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so yeah so for me everything was surprising yeah 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 nowadays like uh uh being working in, in the industry for 10 years and not appearing for an interview is mm. really uncommon yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and i think that's a good insight because uh as you mentioned right uh technology is changing quite at a rapid place so how how do you keep or how do you think to keep yourself uh, updated to the relevant skills and technology. I mean, what's your motivation and, and what's the guiding factor related to it? Because uh, considering the amount of risk that you took, you know, that definitely required a lot of motivation, you know, going from earning position to a spending position and then finishing your master's degree and then looking for the job. So what is your biggest motivation, uh, you know, from now keeping yourself upskilled? in this fast paced yeah. environment. Yeah. So one thing which is a motivation and one thing, you know, which I also learned over a period of time is that uh, you cannot restrict yourself to a particular, you know, specialization. Because say there are some people who say, okay, uh, I'm, I'm a cloud expert or someone will say, uh, I am like a data analytics expert or something. But the truth is that uh, no one can be expert for a very long time in our, in any particular field because that field itself won't last that long because te technology is changing so rapidly and it and the, and the pace is now increasing yeah. if you see like right. uh, i'm just giving an example and making it up for cloud suppose uh, right now it is it is doing pretty well but 10 years down the line 15 years down the line do we know that it's going to be same we don't know that Right. Suppose there are so many skill set which are so useful right now, and now things with, because of AI and you know like Chat GPT, we don't know what is going to happen in five years. 
Yep. So if you say that I I will become expert and that is going to be the only thing which I will do, it's not going to make sense over a long run. Yeah, especially Good like in the telecom yeah. in the telecom sector itself, right? Two G mm-hmm. and four G are the worlds apart, right? There's no yeah, there's no commonality between two G and the four G. Right? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So these are very two different technology. If you consider they are two different sector itself, like like right. in terms of technology, yeah, yeah. right? So you have to, you can't be yourself like, okay, I'm the expert of this and I'll just stick to yeah. this. You have to keep changing and you have to keep upscaling. You have to keep adapting. So this is this is the motivation. This is the... You have to change because if you don't change, you become irrelevant. Yeah. All right. So uh, that was quite valuable insights, uh, Vineet. I would just request you, uh, are you open for any mentorship opportunities if somebody reaches out to you for any mental support uh, over LinkedIn? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Why not? They, I think there are a lot of. There would be a lot of engineers. I think uh, who might be thinking of taking this step, but are reluctant. They haven't seen the success stories yet. All they hear is uh, the fear around that. Like, what's going to happen if they do this? Yeah. But your success story will really motivate them uh, in taking forward this essential. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. If I can be helpful, if I can be of any help to anyone, that it will be good. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Vinit. Thanks, uh-huh. Vinit, for joining us yeah. in the show. Uh, it was nice to have you. And to our viewers, Same here. this was Vinit sharing his experience about his transformation from public to private and from a university, you know, degree to how he's landed his job after having this big transformation.